Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to worship this morning. We are celebrating the transfiguration of our Lord, the last Sunday after the Epiphany. Today is also the day we say, say goodbye to the Alleluias, and then we proclaim them again on Easter morning. So welcome to worship. I invite you to stand as you're able, and we will begin with the Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John, and anointed by the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. <clears throat> to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing. Yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is from Exodus chapter 34. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out, and when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites could see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We'll sing together Psalm 99. since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. 
but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by, the, by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He replied, oh, he was up on a mountain. 
Yes, that's right, said the teacher. Do you remember why he was up there? Johnny answered with a confused look. I guess that's where his arithmetic class was being held. <laughs> teacher looked at him and wondered what he meant. What do you mean, arithmetic class? Well, Johnny replied, the Bible said he went up on the mountain and there he began to figure. <laughs> the teacher smiled and said, the scripture says he went in, uh, onto the mountain and there he became transfigured, not began to figure. Johnny didn't understand the transfiguration and I dare say many of us don't either. The gospel said as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling. Jesus was changed. He was transformed. And in this process, two figures from the past came to join him, Moses and Elijah. This was a marvelous experience for Jesus because it gave him the heavenly assurance he was on the right path, the path to Jerusalem and the cross. He was assured of his place in his father's plan of salvation as two others appeared who had been in on that same plan. Many years ago, I read someone who referred to the Transfiguration as a movie trailer. You know, a glimpse of what's to come that one makes you be present for the whole thing. I love that analogy. We can read the story, we can understand the words, but what does all of it mean? What does it mean for us in this Transfiguration? I think the best way to understand this event, so that we aren't as confused as Johnny was, is to look at three key words, glory, praise, and movement. First, glory. This word glory is used in the text many times. It means awe, wonder, splendor. Christ in all his glory means in all his godly might, in all the splendor of heaven. In this transfiguration, Jesus becomes again as God. As John's Gospel says, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was the Word of God, and now that Word of God became like God again. He became the King and Lord of life. He broke forth from this life to be what he really was, God the Almighty. Have you ever flown an air, on an airplane on a cloudy, rainy day? I have. And as the plane climbs upward through the clouds, you see the rain and maybe lightning all around. To be in the middle of that is to see some powerful and scary power. However, as the plane keeps climbing, then all of a sudden you've climbed out of the clouds. You can look down and see the thunderheads and lightning streaking across the sky. But around the plane is brilliant sun, the deep blue of the sky. It's calm and it's peaceful. You can settle back in your seat no longer tense, no longer afraid of the wind, the rain, and the lightning. You can sit back and enjoy the quiet of the ride, the beauty of the sky. The transfiguration was just that kind of experience for Jesus and the disciples. They, for a moment, left the clouds, the rain, and the brokenness of this life to go up on the mountain to be with Jesus. They went to see where Jesus had come from, to see where they would go because of him. Yes, there's an awe, a beauty, a glory about Christ which fills our lives with peace and contentment. That glory gives to our lives the quiet and radiant peace, which allows us to have the strength and courage to handle all the brokenness of life. A man was asked by a pastor to come to church for four Sundays. He was a skeptic, but the pastor thought that if maybe he would come, he would be convinced to accept Christ. At the end of the fourth Sunday, the man approached the pastor and said, I have given my life to Christ Jesus. 
And the pastor was pleased and said, tell me about it. And the man looked at the pastor and said, well, pastor, it wasn't for preaching. And the man paused for a moment. He went on. On the third Sunday morning, I saw an elderly lady fall down on an icy road. I stopped to help her, and I saw the radiance on her face, even in the midst of such difficulty. So I asked her what gave her life such a radiant glow, and she said simply, If you knew my Lord Jesus Christ and felt his love in your life, you'd have the same look of radiance on your face. I became a Christian, the man said. Because of the glow on that woman's face was like a light shining into the darkness of my soul. The glory, the light, the radiance of the transfiguration is still with us as we allow the Spirit of Christ to enter our lives and transform us into his children. As that glory, that awe, that wonder, that radiance transforms our lives, we become happy. We want to sing praises to God for his acts of deliverance, his transforming acts in our lives. And that brings us to the second word, praise. I have a poem from William Wordsworth. And I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense of sublime, of something far more deeply infused whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean in the living air, and the blue sky, and in the mind of man. A motion and a spirit that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. That presence of God himself through Christ and the Spirit entering our souls and then we drop to our knees in an act of worship as we praise him for his glory. As we are filled with his love, we feel his transforming power. And we come to the knowledge that Jesus is God himself in the flesh for us. Then and only then do we turn to him with our praise, our joy, our spirit filled with loud voices, praising God Almighty for his wonderful deeds. As we accept Jesus as God incarnate, as God with flesh on, then the glory becomes brighter and brighter. As the glory shines more, the praise becomes louder and louder. As our shouts of praise become louder and louder, our acceptance, our welcoming of Christ becomes deeper and deeper in our souls. A life of a Christian is not static but one that's always changing, growing, maturing, accepting, comprehending, absorbing this love of Christ for the self in new and vibrant ways. And that brings us to the final word, movement. We encounter the glory of God. We praise him for it as we learn to accept him. And then he calls us to listen and then to act. The text says, then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. There is a sense which we must still listen to Jesus as he guides us down this journey of life. His speech is always the same. He tells us of the love the Father has for us. And then he challenges us to love one another in the same way. There is a plan a map, a direction to our lives as we listen to Christ. Peter wanted to stay on that mountain, to stay in that place of peace and glory. But Jesus said no. They would descend from the mountain, go back to the valley, back to the brokenness, back to the pain and heartache, back to the people, back to where ministry needs to be done. Can you feel this sense of action? the movement, the going forward with Christ, we listen and then we act. Let our lifestyles show people the radiant face of one who knows Christ, who has praised Christ, who has worshipped and served him, who has listened and followed him. 
Let us act so that all might believe, all might be transformed, all might be made radiant by the love of Christ. Amen. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs filled by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress, Nancy and George, the family of Jana Thompson, Thompson, who passed away on Friday, and especially those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany <coughs> loved ones to illness and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we shout alleluia from the mountaintop. <clears throat> this week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to your worship life, especially Bob, Rocky, Dell, Eric, Milt, Cheryl, and especially Reverend Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Pastor John, Bill, and Don, transform us from glory to glory and give us your peace, that we do not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we know that this is no longer a time of peace in our world. We pray that you intervene, that you find a way to make peace in Eastern Europe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
16th or when Sue sets the pipe? Last Wednesday. No, we're not Sue set them on last Wednesday. Sorry. <laughs> so service is at 6 30. Yes. Any other announcements that aren't in your bulletin only or that need to be brought up? So receive the blessing. God the Father, majestic glory. God the Son, the morning star. And God the Comforter, and God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.